Hi, welcome to the bathtub. This is the old masturbator, Scott Bradfield. Get granny, get grandma, get grandma. Call her in here. This is book tubing the way it was when your grandma was a little girl. We have no no high tech, no no fancy whiteboards, you know, none of this 20th, 21st century innovations. We have a dog. Huh? Did you want to come say hi? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, she's our she's our mascot. She's she's suddenly come back into she's become she's joined the book tubing club again. I don't know why, and, and Dodo's having a huge fit about it. So the mutual with a mutual of Omaha. I'm the Marlon Perkins of literature. That's my other my other ident identity. Um, I don't know what you're going to do here. We're going to do a very quick one. We've kind of fallen off the boat. You know, sometimes we spend so much time in the bathtub we don't have time to film these these stupid bathtub talks. But we have a kind of cool book that we've been reading. And we've got a kind of advanced copy. It may be already available. The Charles Portis has made it into Library of America. It has to got it has got to be the most fun thousand pages ever ever put together in one one volume. So it's basically the collected works of Charles Portis. And you're gonna go. Dodo's gonna make a fuss. Oh my gosh. This is why I can't. It's hard filming these things with these two animals. Um, and so I've been reading through it. I'm reading through the complete Portis. Most of this I've read before. I just read uh, the actually the first the first two books in this volume I have not read before. Dodo, I swear to God, I'm going to strangle you. Okay, you're lucky you go back out of the room. Okay. I'm telling you, you don't get you don't get this type of entertainment in anywhere else in the known book tubing universe. You can go in and play with your things. You can sit with me, but of course, you'll want, all she wants to do is jump on my head. Okay, this is what we do. This is what we do a lot of times. She really doesn't like this. Anyway, where do you get this? Where do you get this type of book tubing? Um. I don't have time to redo this thing, but I will strangle the bird. That's got. That's not going to make a great. That's not going to great a high point of YouTubing if I actually strangle the bird, but I may do it. Okay, so I have not read the first two books in this this in this uh, volume. I've read two or three of the books many times, but I've never read Norwood, which is his first book, his his very short book. It's about a hundred pages, and I read that for the first time. And I also have never read. Weirdly enough, I've never read his most famous book, True Grit. True Grit's been made into the movie. Uh, it's been made into two movies. Some of us like one better than the other. I, I much prefer the John Wayne version. And, uh, okay, Dodo, I swear to God I'm going to put you in the other room. She's been terrible lately. I don't know what it is. Okay, so let's let's just uh, get this done as fast as we can because i gotta, I got I to gotta get on to get out of this room with this crazy animal. Norwood is a very short book. It's very typical of all the Portis novels, which is basically he. There's no real plot. They're they're uh, what would you call them? They're they're just basically trips. They're picaresques. They're they're just somebody traveling somewhere. And in this case, Norwood is some guy who works in some some port part of Arkansas, I think. And the whole story is about him going to pick. He a friend of his owes him seventy dollars. And the whole thing is about him going on a trip to get this seventy dollars, and he goes to New York first because that's where his friend lived in the, in the last uh, the last time he heard from him, and then he just goes off looking for him. And in the course of looking for him, he meets this girl on a bus, and uh, decides to get married at the end of the book. And it's just basically one hilarious scene after another. I want to just read a couple of passages, and then I'm just going to shut up, and I'm going to strangle a bird. You've never seen that. It's something you've never seen on YouTube. A little tiny bird strangled. This is when he goes to he goes to New York. He's in he's in Times Square. He walked to Union Square in a light drizzle and stopped at the automat for a dish of baked beans with a hot dog on top. It was the best thing he had found to eat in New York, and by far the cheapest. The place was packed with damp bums who smelled like rancid towels, and he had to wait for a seat. One fell vacant and he darted in and got it. Then he saw that he had forgotten his silverware. He left a dish of beans on top of an Argosy magazine to stake a table claim and went back to the cutlery stand. While he was gone, the girl with the dirty dishes wagon, dishes wagon picked up his beans, 
and an oriental gentleman across the table got the magazine. A man with a bowl of oatmeal got the seat. Norwood came back and thought at first he had the wrong table. Then he recognized the Chinese gent. He grabbed the magazine from the foreigner's clever hands and turned to the oatmeal man. You got my seat. The man's fast reply was, I don't see your name on it. Norwood stood there with his knife and fork and paper napkin. Just then, a big man in a blue suit, not a bum, but some sort of manager, appeared in the middle of the room and started clapping his hands. It's not raining out there now, he said. Everybody who's not eating, outside. He clapped and bellowed, and there was a sullen, shuffling movement toward the door. He spotted an immobile Norwood. That goes for you, too. Um, there, there's, there's basically an evening in the life of, of, of a kind of a, uh, a country guy in New York in the, in the fast times of Times Square. Almost every paragraph, you kind of, they're almost the, the most densely funny books I can think of because there's just so many funny things happening. You kind of have to read it kind of slowly and kind of enjoy each paragraph and each scene and just the wildness of his characters. There's not I, The other thing I've noticed about Portis is there's not a mean bone in his body. Almost nothing, there's almost no evil in Portis's world, even when terrible things happen. And the, probably the most terrible things happen are a true grit, where a couple some, some pretty bad characters go around and they kill this girl's father at the, at, at just before the book starts. And, and they're just basically losers who are complete idiots and they just don't know what they're doing. And everybody is just, the, 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 the way Portis looks at these people in the world is just as, this kind of, it's this humorous pageant. It's just a pageant of, her, of humor. Um, that's to go on to say, so, so this is a wonderful book to have. It has all five of his novels, which I'm reading through, and I'm going to do some, do some little brief reports on all of them, particularly my favorite. I'm in the middle of my favorite right now, which is Masters of Atlantis, which is just, just a brilliant book. But I finally read True Grit. Now, we all know the John Wayne movie, and Charles Portis wrote the script for the John Wayne movie, or, and I think he may have been credited for it. I, I don't know for sure. He also wrote two sequels. I didn't know this. I think he actually was, he was, he worked on a sequel, the one with Catherine Hepburn, and he wrote a third sequel to it. Anyway, for those of us who saw the, I mean, I, I much prefer John Wayne to Jeff Bridges, and I think John Wayne was kind of perfect as this Rooster Coburn character, Cogburn character that uh, that uh, uh, Portis creates. This is the most narrative of all his books. It's another. You know, pick, it's another trip across a travel narrative. So they basically are going out looking for this guy who killed this girl's father. Almost everyone has seen one of the two movies. And so you know what happens. And she hires this this basically, basically this old crazy codger who's just a violent old man who's been, he's been both a criminal and a cattle rustler. And he's worked for the, he, he ran with the Confederate Army. And then he became a sheriff just because it, it you know, he, he's fairly new to being a sheriff, but it pays decent and he, He's an old drunk <laughs> with one eye. <laughs> and I think, I think Wayne did a pretty good job with the character, but it's a, it's a really broad, wild character. I'd also say that it's not, the, uh, it's not my favorite of all the books. I enjoyed it. Most of the stuff that you will remember from the movies is in the book, almost verbatim, sentence by sentence, especially a lot of the dialogue. And the dialogue between Kim Darby, who was also wonderful as this girl, um, does a really good job as uh, as her. And she also that scene with Strava Martin is almost verbatim out of the book where she's she's bullying him into into uh, buying the horses and then she bu uh, buying her horses from her, her dead father and then she she buys one of the horses back at much cheaper than she sold it to him. It's very so very funny scenes. Anyway, it's a great book. I really enjoyed it a great deal. Not as much as I have as other books. It's um, it's very narrative. It's almost identical to the to the movies, but with a couple of a couple of different original qualities to it that aren't in the, not in the the final movie. But almost scene by scene, it's, it follows along. There's one little brief passage I just wanted to describe because he visualizes things so well. And this is when uh, he he's living with a Chinese guy, who I forget he's, he runs a restaurant or something, and uh, the girl goes over. What's her name? Hattie. She goes over to get him, and she's tr trying to get him to go off to look for t Tom Cheney, who killed her father. I went to the Chinaman's store and bought an apple and asked Lee if Rooster was in. He said he was still in bed. I had never seen anyone in bed at 10 o'clock, 
in the morning who was not sick, but that was where he was. <laughs> she's, where, she's from a farm, so she's never, never seen anyone in bed at 10 o'clock. He stirred as I came through the curtain. His weight was such that the bunk was bowed in the middle, almost to the floor. It looked like he was in a hammock. He was fully clothed under the covers. The brindle cat, Sterling Price, was curled up on the foot of the bed. Rooster coughed and spit on the floor and rolled a cigarette and lit it and coughed some more. He asked me to bring him some coffee and I got a cup and took, and took the Eureka pot from the stove and did this. As he drank, little brown drops of coffee clung to his mustache like dew. <laughs> Men will live like billy goats if they are let alone. He seemed in no way surprised to see me, so I took the same line and stood with my back to the stove and ate my apple. I said, you need some more slats in that bed. I know, he said. That is the trouble. There is no slats in it at all. It is some kind of a damned Chinese rope bed. I would love to burn it up. It is not good for your back, sleeping like that. You are right about that, too. A man my age ought to have a good bed if he has nothing else. How does the weather stand out there? The wind is right sharp, said I. It is clouding up some in the east. We are in for snow, or I missed my guess. Did you see the moon last night? I do not look for snow today. She's always correcting everybody in the book. Anyway, almost every page is wonderful. I don't think there's a bad page or paragraph in Portis. Um, I think if you're if uh, we're going to read through the whole the whole corpus, the entire. Uh, volume of the, of the Library of Con a Library of America's terrific new edition of Portis, Charles Portis, one of the great comic writers of all time. And, and, and a, kind of, a kind of insight to human, in human life. He's not just a comic writer. He really does have some, some sense of the beauty and, and proportion of, of human beings and their, all their foibles. All right, take care. Sorry for this disastrous episode, but hopefully it'll get better.